Hey everybody, this is Andy, aka Ghosts, and I'm here with the second in our Deck Builder Spotlight series from Commander Cash Shorts. And this one, my guest is Fugu, aka Adam, from the EDH forums. Hi, Adam. Hi. Uh, so why don't you introduce everybody to yourself? Uh, let's just get uh, your play style, general you'll be going through, etc., etc. What kind of play group you play in? Um, I uh, I play um, I play a lot of EDH. Uh, that's probably what we play most often, if, unless we're cube drafting. Um, I really like um, uh, the, the, about the format, I guess, the, the variety of cards that are played. And I get my preference, a lot, most of the decks that I play, or the games that I find the most fun, are really the ones where I get to, where there's, a, where there's racing. And, you know, creature-based, my, my play group is very creature-based. Mm-hmm. And um, I really like trying to find strategies or new ways to put pressure on opponents in an efficient way and, uh, and trump the race, really. That's what okay. I find interesting. So uh, today we're going to be looking at Intet the Dreamer, uh, your yeah. Intet deck, which is cool because that was my first general, so I'm interested oh, to see yeah. your take on it because I'm tweaking it all the time. I'm not really happy with the way it works right now. So uh, what kind of strategy is this deck generally following? What's the archetype that we're looking at here? Um, it's, it plays a lot of acceleration. Uh, the, the, the hope is that you can stick a, um, a very threatening creature or, or two um, and uh, deal some damage before they uh, before they get killed, and then re- you know repeat with a new creature. So this is more of an aggro deck than anything else. It's it's it, yeah it's it really like an aggro deck, although it has um, um, it's really not. But I mean the creatures are large. You know, most of them are like in the five and six mana range, and uh, you know a lot of dragons basically. Yep. Uh, along with Intet himself, who's you know very good attacker. Okay, that's interesting because a lot the Intet deck you can, you can build it in a lot of different ways just because it's such a unique color combination. Like you see, mm-hmm. control decks, a lot of combo decks, and occasionally the aggro decks. So, do you kind of have a splash of those other styles in there as well? Like, do you have a second kind of combo backup plan? It, it started out as much more of a combo deck when I when I first built it. It was I just wanted to build like a good stuff deck, but I wanted to. Uh, there were some card interactions that I really wanted to try and exploit, mm-hmm. and uh, over time, a lot of those. For example, one of them was uh, uh, like Turnabout Reiterate, uh, yep. which gives you infinite mana if you have enough to start with. Um, as well as I wanted to play Sneak Attack with a lot of uh, you know what I thought were really broken Sneak Attack combos. Okay. Over time, some of them I played so often that they became kind of stale, like the Reiterate combo. So Reiterate's gone now. I replaced it with Wild Ricochet. Um, you took Reiterate out, but you didn't take out Turnabout. I didn't. I, t- I kept in Turnabout because I really it's such a great trick. Um, yeah, true, true. It's just that turnabout is more commonly associated as being the combo card. Well, I don't really. If you cut, if you cut reiterate, I don't have anything in combo with it. And in fact, if I cut true. reiterate, sorry, if I cut turnabout but leave in reiterate, I still have things like if I there's a if, you know you can reiterating like your cryptic command, and uh, when you have uh, if you already have infinite mana from any other source is still a way to combo out. True. So. Yeah. Okay. So, did you pick Intet then as a general because you want to abuse his top of the deck ability, or did you just pick him because of the colors, or what was the? Problem? I picked him for the colors. Yeah, I really did pick him for the colors. Yeah, he's the only yeah. choice, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, because though the combos that I wanted to play were most most of the ones I wanted to play, I could fit into a red, green, blue deck. Okay, yeah. so this is a deck that's built been built over time, then, as opposed to you put a list together and you kind of stuck to that rigidly with a final vision for it. No, it's it's really has changed uh, uh, a lot in the la- in the last I guess month or two that I've been playing it. Uh, it's had a couple of different versions. Okay. Uh, um, now, what about your highlight cards? What are the cards that you'd say, especially in the most recent build, have made the biggest splash and are kind of the ones that you want people to know about the most? The most important cards uh, that that in the deck right now. Uh, the one like the the most once I when the ones when I draw them I feel like yes I'm going to win this game. Uh, <laughs> probably number one is Genesis Wave. Oh uh, yeah, that thing's a beast in EDH. The, the, the thing because the the deck plays a lot of mana and ex, you know like ex, having some acceleration in your first several turns is a is a really huge boost. And uh, and those things coming around late are still going to be fine because you have so many good mana dumps and Genesis Wave is one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, a big Genesis Wave is going to get you. Uh, you know, like three or, or four. It really depends on what X is. It could be it could be ten giant creatures, a bunch of untapped lands to do more things with, um, and all of, almost all of the creatures I run have uh, really strong come into play abilities. Okay. Um, so so even off Genesis Wave, you're getting a lot of value. Okay. Or and the same is true of with Sneak Attack. Uh, I play Woodfall Primus, which is really a staple. Um, 
and I play uh, I play like Vithian Renegades, Acidic Slime. I really want to be able to kill all of the artifacts and enchantments. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, probably one of the coolest uh, sneak attack creatures that I have is called Hoverguard Sweepers. I don't think a lot of people know about this card. Nope. I, didn't. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Hoverguard Sweepers is blue, blue, and six for a 5-6 flyer. When it comes into play, you may return up to two target creatures to their owner's hands. Oh, that's pretty slick. So if you have, say, um, Hoverguard Sweepers and anything, <laughs> yeah. like well, Primus, for every two red you have, you get to kill an, uh, a non-creature permanent. Yeah, oh, that's beast mode. If you have Hoverguard Sweepers and Palancron, which I also play, you have infinite mana of any of any of every of every color. Yeah. Which means then you have as many uh, sneak attack activations as you want. Oh, there's a little secret tech for everybody listening out there. What's the name of that card again? Hoverguard Sweepers. Okay, where's that set is that from? Uh, it's from Fifth On. It's a rare. Stellar. And. Uh, the thing is, it like I've I've actually just had the opportunity recently to cast hard cast it for the first time, and it felt <laughs> it felt it cost eight mana, but bouncing two creatures and he's got a big body such too. a huge swing, and you can even do tricks like I'll just pick up this Vithian Renegades because your mind's eye is giving me headaches. Yeah, ten four. Um, now, as far as that goes, um, you talk a lot about the, your acceleration, your ramp. What's your kind of ramp suite in this deck? Um, I have, um, I have Oracle of Moldai as probably the best acceleration card in the deck. Yeah, you know, I just put that into my deck as well, and I've really been liking it a lot. It's way more powerful than I thought it was going to be. It's huge. I, a lot of the times it feels better than Future Sight, <laughs> which I also play. Yeah. Um, but I just, some, like, when you have, the, often I have Future Sight and I'm like, well, I, I really wish this was an Oracle of Moldai because I don't. I don't have the mana to play this spell that's on top, or, or uh, you know, I get stuck on this land. Yeah. Um, the Moldai at least lets you interact with that card. Right, right. You just you just tear through your library. Mm -hmm. um, I also play um, Explosive Vegetation, which always feels great. Yep, classic. Um, and uh, I play Kadama's Reach, Yep. Uh, which is never bad. I also play quite a lot of cards that are just trying to help me hit land drops. Um I play Yavimaya Elder and I play Crows and Tusker, and those are okay, yeah. those are always they always feel great. Yeah, um, never a dead first, card. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Crows and Tusker leaves me feeling so far ahead um, for only three mana at instant speed. Mm -hmm. um, other the other ramp cards are Cultivates, uh, Sakura Tribe Elder, Wood Elves, and I just added Explore, um, and Explore actually ha has been really good so far. Really. Um, it's kind of like, like there's in, in it's in that two mana spot where a rampant growth I think would just be really terrible, um, because it would only be good on the second turn. Yeah, Explore rampant growth never contrast, feels right to me. Yeah, explore by contrast is actually is awesome on the second turn, just as good as rampant growth because you all I mean the way I play we Brittany Mulligan, uh, which I don't know if that rule uh, if you guys know that rule set, but you basically sculpt your hand as part of the Mulligan process. Yep. And you're always trying to fill your hand with lands. Yeah, so, you want to get at least three to start off, for sure. So Explore is always going to be a, uh, you know, an accelerant on turn two. And then late in the game, it's not Rampant Growth, it just cycles. Yeah, okay. Because uh, do you find that Rampant Growth is um, worth it, though, as far as taking up a slot in the deck goes? Because my whole thing is, I understand that it's good, but I'm always like, man, do I really want to explore, or do I want to put in you know, another utility spell or something like that, a little more powerful, maybe? Well, the thing is that since, this, since Explore draws a card... Um, it really doesn't take up any space. I mean, there. I guess it, there are fewer. Uh, there's less variants in the deck. Mm -hmm. I mean, sort of. It, well, there's not. There's there is uh, there is this. I mean, explore is a card. Um, so that that you know that's not. Yeah, towards my hundred card limit is what I'm talking about. It's just that uh, it. Um, I mean, it, it, if I if I don't want an explore, I don't have to have an explore. I just cash it in for the top card of my library. True. Yeah, effectively cycles. Now, um, you mentioned that you have. Genesis Wave, and you mentioned Future Sight earlier. Now those are triple color, on one color. Do you ever have a hard time meeting that color requirement when you want to play those cards? Um, rarely. Uh, I actually did cut Cryptic Command for a couple of reasons, and one of them was the triple blue. Um, yeah, I was going to say that's not a card you hear guys cutting out of their decks very often. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the one of the reasons was the triple blue. In the case of Future Sight, it's uh, Genesis Wave is almost never an issue because uh, you know you don't cast it before you have excess. Yeah, six. true. Um, Future Sight is also rarely an issue because I don't like to lead with Future Sight. I like to play Future Sight when I have no cards in hand. 
you know, or close to. Um, not only because you get more value out of being able to play top card of your deck, but people have less uh, enchantment removal saved up. Okay. Uh, at that stage in the game. Uh, so, so I usually have had time to develop my mana base. And because I play so much, uh, I, all this, all this mana ramp that I've mentioned fixes your mana. So it's pretty easy to assemble colors. Okay. So uh, all in all, what makes this strategy work? Like, why is it effective in a multiplayer context? And what would you say to people that are thinking about trying it out? Um, probably the, the really key thing to it all is uh, come into play abilities. Um, you know, if you're trying to get there with creatures, they need to be sorceries but better. Um, yeah, that's good advice. Uh, you know, because it, it, I use like I've cut creatures like Niv Mazette, for example, which is abstractly a super powerful card. Um, but I just found that whenever I had it in my hand, it just it just always felt awful spending six mana on a card that I did not expect to untap with. Yeah, uh, if if he doesn't have haste, that guy just gets blown the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. Well, or he even worse, he gets he gets stolen. The other thing about yeah, that's way worse. <laughs> The other thing about play creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities is when they get stolen, most of their value is already used up. Now it's just a vanilla creature. So yeah, you can steal my vanilla guy. I've already gotten my value. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even better in the case of, like, when they steal your Woodfall Primus, that feels, that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah, who cares? Because, hey, when it dies, I get a Woodfall Primus. Yeah, it's coming back. Okay, now with this deck, what would you say are the weaknesses or particular archetypes, maybe cards that kind of folds up to? Um... Because uh, I, I know if, in my deck, if somebody plays a decent land destruction de uh, land destruction <laughs> suite, it's very easy to keep me off color. I'm not too afraid of, afraid of land destruction. I actually play a very basic heavy mana base uh, helps, in order yeah. to beat like ruination, which was in my meta for a little while, and other things like that. Um, and I play so much ramp, but things that are going to be a problem for me, like there's just there's not that much. Um, I guess like uh, it, it's all multiplayer, and we all have a very good like casual mindset so if i was ever if i was playing against like competitive combo or or like maybe zur uh which none of none of nobody in my group plays i probably would have have trouble with some of those kind of decks it's it's uh you know it's, it's a little bit um you know I, it can be slow it can have problems it can have games where i've had i've lost a game recently where i was like well for some reason i'm not drawing cards and so uh you know when you kill my creatures i uh you know, that was it. I, I wasn't able to generate anything powerful that game. But uh, by con on, the, on the other, I've had also games where, you know, I, I'm I get to be the dominating force in the game. I'm the one who's applying pressure, playing the creatures, uh, uh, making people uh, get up and do something. So would you say your 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 deck is kind of um, it might tend to succumb to a bad draw off the hop? I have had bad draws with it, and I'm trying to excise those. You know, uh -huh. make you know cutting cards that I felt were clunky um, or didn't have. I, I just I just keep adding cards that basically cycle like explore, um, and uh, and 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 like the crows and tusker you know cards that like an aether spell bomb cards that I can't fail to redeem for you know some gas if I need to. Okay, uh, well unless you got anything else to add, Adam here uh, we're gonna wrap things up. So uh, any final words for anyone that's interested in this deck? Um, it's it's all uh, you know. I really like uh, I really like the feel of it. I really like being the guy who's uh, who's putting the pressure on the on my opponents, uh, forcing them to react to me. Uh, and I think that's really what you get with this style of build. All right, yeah, I'm gonna be interested to look a, a little closer at your deck list as well, because like I said, I'm tuning my own, and I think I might want to lane it a little more aggro. So uh -huh. we'll see what comes out of that. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, though. Appreciate it. Uh, be thanks sure to check us out at commandercast.blogspot.com. We got video content. We got the podcast going now. And uh, we're going to have lots more deck interviews like this one in the near future. And I'll have Adam's deck list posted in the show notes as well. So uh, until next time, everyone, just keep grinding out those games of EDH, and we'll talk to you later.